You ready? Yeah. Go. Okay, Kaido of photography. I'm going to teach you all how to do this tonight. About three summers ago, around Easter, after a couple of beverages, I decided to put a camera on a kite. I sent it up in the air. This is what you get. It's terrible. There's a couple of problems. So, how do we fix this? There's a couple of problems inherent in kite aerial photography. One, it's windy up there. Everything's moving. The kite is higher than you can reach. The camera is higher than you can reach. And your camera weighs too much. And all your pictures look terrible because you can't see a picture of what you're taking a picture of. Someone said to me, hey, just put it in Photoshop. Go ahead, put it in Photoshop. Level horizon looks great. So I put it in Photoshop, and, and that's what I got. Uh, it's fantastic. So I'm going to talk to you about pendulums. Pendulums, OK, pendulums. You think a grandfather clock. Grandfather clock's got a pendulum. Turn it on its side. Which direction does the pendulum point to? Down. Always points to the earth, right? How does that help me? If I take a pendulum and I attach it to a kite string, and then if I think about it and I take the kite string and I put a shelf at the bottom of the pendulum, then what have I got? I've got a shelf that's always level with the horizon. No matter what the kite string is doing, that pendulum always is level with the horizon. Got it? Okay. All right. It's, it's physics. All right. So I've got a shelf on it. So. Don't worry, it gets, it gets, the science gets more complicated than this. Here we go, we step back to a guy, 1912, this guy is called Pierre Picavet. He worked all this out. He said, I'm going to take a cross, I'm going to string it up with a bunch of string that I got from PW's Marine, and you know what do I get? I get a cross that's level with horizon because it's a pendulum. So I decided, right, having looked at all this stuff, I decided to build one. So I got in my back garden. If I can open this up in 20 seconds, we're going to keep this going. 20 <laughs> seconds. That's a prototype. That's, that's prototype number one. That didn't work so good. Here's the one I actually built. Here's the shelf right here. This is how the pendulum works. No matter what you do, it stays level with the horizon. That's hanging from a kite string. Just pretend it's a kite string. I got it up in the air. Okay. Here's me. It's up in the air. Now I can take pictures of stuff because I got level with the horizon. But here's the problem. Now I don't know what I'm pointing at. So I got this kite up in the air. It's flying away. Great, now what do you do? You've got to take a picture with this thing. It's not stable. You've got to be able to press the shutter release. You've got to be able to take a picture. Time-lapse photography is the answer. You need a camera or some method of pressing the shutter at intervals while it's up in the air. Time-lapse photography is basically the answer to that. Most cameras won't do this. You have to be selective on what you can do. So time-lapse photography essentially is like having a stopwatch on your camera. Every five seconds, it takes a picture when it's up in the air. How does this help me? Because if my camera is up in the air and I know that every five seconds it's taking a picture, I don't have to worry about pressing the shutter button. It's very complicated. Other ways of doing it using electronics, but this is all very manual. All this stuff, manual process. There's no batteries in this thing yet. So it's a manual process, taking a picture. What do I get? I get a sequence of images. How does this help me? My sequence of images is just like time-lapse photography. All I have to do is point it in the right direction. I know every five seconds it's going to take a picture. Here's the problem. The kite's moving. The camera's moving. The string is moving. Everything when you're up in the air is moving. You're up to still. <laughs> this is what you get. How are we going to solve this? Those guys who are out there who play with cameras, you know shutter speed, right? The faster you can get that shutter speed to work, the faster you're going to stop the motion. Now, this is shutter speed in reverse. All those people who are taking sports photography, you've got something zipping by, rollerbladers, roller derby, zipping by. We need to have really, really fast shutter speed in order to freeze the action. But the kite is the thing that's moving. The camera is the thing that's moving. The earth is still. So it's reverse shutter speed. We're using in reverse. Did I lose you? I lost you, right? OK. <laughs> so, so don't worry. I had to think about this. It took me months to think about this. So now I've got this kite up in the air. This is great. I got still photography because I'm using a really fast shutter speed. I can now take pictures of stuff. I got it all slowed down. The picture's coming out nice and solid. It's nice and uh, sharp. That's my dog. He's his, he assists me with things like that. So <laughs> what we got now is we've got the ability to put this thing up in the air. We're getting sharp images off of it. Where in Bermuda is this? New game, dockyard, right. That's great. That's not what I wanted a picture of. So I have, to have, I have to have the ability to somehow point the camera in the right direction. So point the camera in the right direction. I've got to be able to turn this thing while it's, ooh, that's about 600 feet up in the air. I've got to be able to turn this thing. If you think about aeronautical controls, we have pitch, we have roll. I have to be able to take this shelf that's down here, I have to be able to turn it, and I have to be able to tilt it. So it's pitch and roll. What do we do with that? We use airplane remote control airplane servers from a little uh, remote control plane. 
So I sat down, looked, did some research on this. I thought, right, okay, all you need to do is put a little servo on the top. It's like a helicopter in reverse, right? So this is a helicopter. That part there, this is a helicopter, except it's spinning in reverse underneath. This part stays still, this part spins. It's right here, right here. Okay, so this part stays still, this part moves, right? Put the shelf, put the camera on the shelf underneath, then you can change the pitch of the camera. You can now point it down. Why am I holding a chopstick with a ball on the end? Because this is the key to the whole thing. When you get a camera 600 feet up in the air, you can't see where the camera is or where it's pointing. So if you take the chopstick and you stick the chopstick in here with a pair of binoculars at 600 feet, I can now tell where it's going. I'm going to talk to you one second. 20 seconds on wait, 20 seconds on wind, wind. The wind dies, cameras are heavy. When the wind dies and the cameras are heavy, 15 seconds after this shot was done, it ended up in the wreck there off a of Spanish point, where I then had to go out and swim out to get it. <laughs> so you now end up with the ability to point at stuff. You've got the camera up in the air. You've got the kite taking pictures. The camera's taking pictures. Everything's good. You start to get some pictures that are resembling kite aerial photography. And it's a learning process. And you can do this too. You have to slow it down. The last thing I'm going to show you is when it all comes together, you get that kind of picture. So we've overcome these obstacles. Now you've got something up in the air. The camera's in focus. You can take pictures. And I'm here. I'm there. And that's it. That's kite aerial photography in six minutes and 40 seconds. <laughs>
aerial mapping. Yes. Um, I have. I also have another device that's. I use a an 11 foot uh, levitation delta kite, which is basically like a plastic bird kite, but it's a little bit more fancy. But I have one other device that I use, uh, which is called a Gila kite. It's a cross between a kite and it has a helium balloon bladder on the back of it, right. which allows me to loft it on days when there's less than five knots of wind. Um, but yes, mapping, someone approached me about that and it can be done. You just need a special camera for that though. You can do this with any kite that'll fly and stay up in the air. Reasonably solid. You need to have it so that it's like nailed up in the air. <laughs> but no, seriously, because the more it moves, the more you end up with problems, right? Because everything's doing this. No, no Hummers, no, no Bermuda kites that are, that are doing this like this. You want it to go up, you want it to be rock solid. You have to, your kite has to be balanced, it has to be rock solid in the sky. Yep. Good? Uh, Good. Wait, right. one, more, one more, one more. What kind of camera are you using in this using a gopro okay okay one other which is a canon s95 we didn't talk okay. about that but the canon s95 you have to hack it using a can canon hack developers kit to make it take a picture every five seconds using a programming language so i didn't go into that right but gopro, GoPro, GoPro. Is built in every okay. five seconds perfect <laughs> uh i'm a technical project manager <laughs> <laughs> he, he would be. He would be. Yeah, He'd have to be. <laughs> <laughs>